Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, January 1st, 2023. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, up with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, that's me. I'm the Wombat. And our guest today is Boudreaux from uh, Kentucky. Welcome. Hey, hey. And um, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt in Tennessee, we have a group of over a thousand of us, and I understand the one in Nashville is even larger than that. <laughs> the, the Atheist Group, uh, Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. We'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Well, Matt, what's your topic today? Hey, we're talking about Happy New Year wishes. We're talking about license plates, and we're going to be talking about making changes to the Bible to improve and impact society. But before we get to that, Happy New Year, everybody. Brand New Happy Year. Happy New Year. Feels good. Feels right. good to be alive. We we made it around a rock. You know, yeah. we we made it around a big giant plasma ball, not a rock. Yeah. We're this on our seventy third trip. That's pretty cool. Very <laughs> impressive when you think about it. Like some people go, it, it's it's an easy thing to take for granted, but we <clears> survived <throat> through a lot of stuff, and yeah. I'm very happy to make it through up to up to now. Yeah. Very incredible. true. Very true. Boudreaux, you have any uh, New Year's plans? What's going to be different this year compared to mm. last? Oh, I don't know. I guess I never made anything official. Fitness is going to be a big, big goal. Um, okay, I'm running a 5K today at two o'clock. So nice. Uh, oh, very good. Off, right. You must be pretty fit to already do 5Ks, taking them in stride. Yeah, uh, well, I don't do good. much longer than 5Ks anymore. Yeah. Not no, to pry into great. not to pry into your life, Boudreaux, but he actually has like a garage where he has all the ribbons that he's run like on yeah. a big string. Yeah. It's very impressive. It's very, very cool. Yeah, but they're participation trophies. <laughs> <laughs> actually, to be fair, a couple of them are because they happened during COVID and we didn't really run them like we were supposed to. So Yeah. So and I'm and I'm prying a little bit more. Let me know if this is picking on you, Eric. But like I would say, uh I've seen the show Pee Wee's Playhouse. It's sort of your home is sort of structured like that, where it's like, here's my fun thing that I do up here. And this is this crazy little room down here. And this yeah. is the garage. And this is the toolbox room. And this is yeah. the place where I put these things on. It's like, OK, everything has a little theme where I can yep. feel like you're like, I want the fun things in my life to be centered around here. I like that a lot. That's really cool. I don't even want to know what's behind those tubs behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, very cool. Very cool. Larry, what's your plans for this year? Oh, well, I hope to lose some weight. That's that's about it. Um, no, I'm pretty happy with the, the life I'm living right now. I, I, Very cool. I would, I'm would. i looking forward to retirement whenever that happens. Um, you and Joe Biden. Been, yeah. I've been retired for a year and a half before I started this last job, and I enjoyed it. But I'm enjoying the work, too. So it's nice. all good. Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Last year, I was 109 pounds more than I am now. Yeah. And so I'm done, not necessarily done with the weight loss, but now it's all about cosmetic <laughs> improvements. I just want the definition. I got my first vascularity vein on my bicep. Oh, no. We could go. And I'm really, really happy to see it. It's, it's really, oh, really small, okay. but it's there. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I want you to get bigger. I want you to be all over the place. But uh, I'm getting into rock climbing now, too. So I'd like to be able Ooh. to do so a V3 by the end of the year. That's that would be my goal, which is just outside of the beginner level of rock climbing. So we have a rock climbing wall at our gym here, which is about like five minutes away from where I'm at. And I have bought my own hand grips because I just want to put new kinds of holds on that wall. And so after this call, I'll probably be back at the gym trying out different kinds of like sets and very controlled sends up and down and sideways on the wall that we have here. It's really, really cool. Anyway, well, I, was, I was a rock climber um, back in college. Oh, for real? Uh, yeah, outside stuff. Um, and now my daughter climbs at a gym here in yeah, Canada. Yeah, she climbs yeah. on on buildings and stuff like that. I <laughs> yeah, <it>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, rock climb is awesome, man. My my best climb was a five twelve A. Uh, I don't know how that converts to the V 
no i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to learn more bouldering lingo but it sounds high sounds high (laughs) sounds super high that's really good and there's a lot of cool rocks around the area too anyway Mm. guys next topic real quick so tennessee has a new license plate um i tried to renew my license plate online because it's a pretty simple thing they just give you a new sticker they said we aren't giving you the sticker because we have a brand new plate and you'll have to come and order it or order online i'm like okay that's fine i ordered it online and i saw there are two options i had two boxes i could pick from the state sanctioned one and then a vanity plate that had the exact same layout as the state sanctioned one but it said in god we trust around the logo for tennessee and I didn't think of it as a big deal because I had that same question asked me last year's or when I had the old plates as well. So I just said the standard state sanctioned one. I, if I ever become a Christian, I'll get a bumper sticker. I'm not going to put it on a state issued thing, right? Right. And, separation. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Separation of state and church. That's all I'm about. So I picked the, the standard state issue one and it came in and I was fine with it. And then I saw something that was like playing with my head a little bit because my Mine license too. plate mm-hmm. starts with three letters and three numbers. And that's the way how this the default state issue license is. But then I saw, the, and it was interesting because my license plate, not to divulge too much information on me, but had BLM at the front. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> I was like, is that intentional? Or is that like what everyone else has? Some people have BLR, some people have BLYs. I was just like, okay, so it kind of like changes. But I noticed that some license plate had three numbers in front of it. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I go up to those license yeah. plate and they say, in God we trust. And I'm like, is that a trend? Because that's the way my brain is always thinking. And every single license plate I saw in the state of Tennessee that starts with, in, that has the In God We Trust my logo on it, starts with three numbers and ends with three letters. Whereas all the secular tags have three letters and then three numbers. So it's ABC123 if you don't believe in God, and it's 123 oh. ABC if you do believe in God. That's it's very actually, It's actually uh, three letters and four numbers. But, oh, four uh, numbers. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah whether you start so i can from a distance now and this is not my little paranoid brain thinking of things as i'm driving down the street i'll drive down the street i'll be like numbers that guy believes in god numbers that guy's a christian letters <laughs> let's go I see, you, I see you i see you i see you i see you larry did you notice that too is that the same thing oh yeah saying? definitely uh, and I, I like playing head games like you did mm-hmm. like why would they do that why would they make it so obvious that you chose uh to put in god we trust on your license plate versus those who didn't mm-hmm. i mean it's like you could you could tell it from you know 50 yards away it just basically why would they do that yeah like in a parking lot you could be like uh-huh. christian 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 oh that's an interesting possibly any the weirdest mm-hmm. thing the weirdest thing for me is i used to think i was the only atheist in like my town you always think that you always think you are and like you right. said it's not true go out start a club find out but you'll see like a red truck with a guy mm-hmm. in a trucker hat driving down the street and it's like messed up fender and he's got the american flag on it and you're just like oh here it comes but then you look around and his license plate starts with letters and you're like huh this guy might be <laughs> yeah, uh, this is interesting I might, I might want to hang out with this guy sometime we'll see if yeah. he plays disco so um i have noticed that they released the statistics on the license plates on whether they were secular tags or uh non-secular tags it's very easy to track um the trend is not surprising the trend is essentially the bigger the town and the more money it makes the more proportion there is of secular license plates whereas the smaller the county and the less more more impoverished that they are or below the poverty line the more likely they're going to have a religious tag the biggest example is davidson county where nashville is located 703,000 people 13% of them took the religious tag, whereas Fentress County, which is one of the smallest counties we have here, it's only less than 20,000 people, right? There's towns bigger than that. Um, They have 98% of the religious tags. And so what the way I would interpret this information is there seems to be a startling majority of people, just population-wide, that aren't taking the state sanctioned tags but if you broke it up into counties and percent and, and normalize it through percentages it seems like it's like truly a 50 50 split where just based on number of heads it seems to be overwhelmingly um non-secular tags not only that but those larger cities are only getting bigger and they're spreading out into the smaller nearby or adjacent counties i feel like this is a trend in a good direction we're gonna eventually see uh, a tipping of the scale 
And I'm only I'm only taken back by the idea that this vanity plate that has the in God we trust is just so easily given out by the state and like offered for free. It seems like we could have had um, vanity plates to support autism or wildlife or teachers or anything like that. But it's the one that they picked was one that looks exactly like the state issued one, except for just swap numbers. I feel like that's a bit of a bias where if you want to keep that, I'm fine, but maybe give us more options for other vanity plates too. If you, if you automatically give us the Christian version or the <clears throat> religious right. version. So, and ahead. you got to wonder um, which God it is, you know, that's, oh, we, we that's know which the, one they mean. The federal government always use the word God so everybody can just, if you're, you're Muslim, it's, well, it's my God. You yeah. know, if you're Hindu, it, well, it's my God. One of them. Mm-hmm. Right. Boudreau, what do you think? Yeah, so I, I bet if you went back in the archives, <clears throat> you could probably find a clip of me saying something similar in Kentucky. I've, I've noticed we have a In God We Trust option, and I don't think you have to pay for it <clears throat> either. Um, but um, I, I had noticed you, you pulled up statistics but i had more anecdotal um uh evidence where i would walk around a parking garage or a parking lot or whatever and i would notice the in god we trust and then i would look above it to the county that it hmm. was from hmm. and it seemed to me and again this isn't scientific this isn't you know i didn't jot these numbers down but but just the hunch i had was that not the hunch but um most of the time when i saw that in god we trust because i would look for it and I moved up to the county, it wasn't Fayette County, which is where Lexington is. It wasn't right. Jefferson County, which is where Louisville is. Mm. It was some of the smaller counties in the surrounding area. Right. And the, like you said, with statistics, there's this overwhelmingly higher proportion of the in God we trust in the rural, smaller communities. Right. And I, I all of the reasons we can suspect, I'm sure, um, are there. But I think there might be another piece to it. And I'm, I'd, I'd be curious, the DMV. If you go to the DMV there to get your license plate, is there like a social pressure for you to get the In God We Trust? So because you might know the person that, that works there. Ah, that's funny. Because when I go to, okay, Larry, you want to weigh on in that? I was just going to say, I read something this morning and said that when they went to the DMV, they were just handed a plate. They didn't have an option. And he would think that if the, if the person was a religious person, they would hand out the In God We Trust plate, you know, with a higher rate than the other and vice versa sure uh this could just be me my mindset <laughs> is um uh when i went to the dmv and i got my new tag when i first moved down here a while back ago uh it was a lady in glasses and a room full of other ladies with glasses and she gave me an option of two tags and she was basically pointing them at her desk you want this one or the game god we trust and i was like i want this one and she gave me that one and there was no mean looks or anything like that at a time but like i can imagine someone who might be not as confident with their atheism as i am to be yeah. potentially yeah. swayed yeah. in that moment with a line of people behind them because it is a small town here yeah no i absolutely yeah. agree and at and that I, point, I know her name her name's jenny and i called her to renew yeah. my license she's like oh is this ty yeah is this jenny yeah come down here ty we got your new tag <laughs> for you i was just like i appreciate that yeah. <laughs> it's a small town <laughs> Yeah, but particularly at that point, you don't know the difference between the numbers on the left and right. You just right. think, well, this one has a you know guy we trust on, and this one doesn't. Mm, right. You don't realize that there's another whole facet to it that you know can be seen at quite a distance. Yeah, it's very true. Very true. I would say this though: if you are interested, or if you live in the Tennessee area, you can actually look at the statistics available. I'll post them in my YouTube channel, and I'll also send the link out to everybody if you post this conversation that we're having please post that uh link as well um if not you can also google it it's called nash or the link is called tennessee license plate kit picks nashville drivers don't trust in god question mark it's like of course they don't <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been up to nashville it's pretty great uh the sunday assembly of nashville is one of the best uh sunday assemblies i've been up to but um ideally um look up your county and realize that my impression is in my town, I was the 1% of the people who don't have the tax. In fact, there's 35% of people who don't have those tax here. And that's overwhelmingly much larger than I anticipated. Not only that, but based on where I was shopping, and this is this is how in the weeds I got. I went to Walmart and I was the only car with the letter tag as I was walking up and down, uh, uh, going in and out. And I was just like, man, I feel w- kind of bad about that. And then I went to Kroger and like every car nine in a row 
up to my car were all letters. And I'm thinking, oh man, it's been stratified just down to gentrified areas in town versus non-gentrified areas in town. Sure. Isn't that isn't that crazy? Yeah. So uh, it, it, it's it speaks to the concept of just like, you know, it's not so much a stratification of belief. It's just where are you and and how much money do you have available to you and what kind of options do you have? That sort of determines whether or not yeah. you're um, pressured into it. Speaking to uh, being able to see it at a distance, mm. I just looked at that website and it said that my hometown had 98%. Your hometown? 97.9%. Where's that, 9 .9%. Where's that so at? Because uh, it's not Knoxville. Ben Benton County. Got it. West Tennessee. Mm. And if you're in that town you can imagine the pressure of, yeah. of saying that you want one without and got yep. to trust uh, with the police department, you know, see you coming down the road or going down the road, they, they might be leaning in the other direction or pull you over for some tiny infraction. Exactly. That's the first thing I thought about. Like yeah. I was scared you, that you what can't I... read in God, we trust on these plates at any distance. But you right. can sure see those numbers. You sure can. Wow. If I, I get pulled over by the cops and it's like some crazy religious cop, and mm -hmm. like I got the ones that start with letters is going to be like, OK, well, now I'm going to do my thing. I haven't had mm -hmm. anyone like vindictively or suspiciously wish me or bless me or anything like that. I don't it's not gotten that crazy, but it's just sort of feeding unneeded fuel to a fire that's been burning for a while and hopefully should go out pretty soon. I'm hoping like within 20 years, within my lifetime, we'll mm -hmm. reach an age of at least culture where Religion is sort of like something people are proud in, in the sense that Greeks are proud of their Greek gods, but no one actually literally believes in the Greek gods, and they aren't using them to determine cultural rules. It's just, oh, these were the things that we thought were cool and our ancestors had, but we don't actually believe these things. We're we're all culturally atheists, but we like those gods. It's like those are ours. And 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 Bujo, you've been to Greece, so like I'm hoping I'm not stepping on any toes. No one actually believes in like. Zeus or anything like that, right? Yeah, I don't think so. No. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, cool. I want that. Twenty years, guys. We can do it. Yeah. All right. So, moving on to a different topic, which is going to be the main topic for this of the show. Uh, Boudreaux, would you like to introduce it? You had a really good um, premise for it. Sure. Yeah. So, um, uh, the idea here, and, and Larry, I think you wrote about this in the book. Uh, mm -hmm. At least there's uh, something similar. But yeah, the idea here just to get good conversation going would be if you could make one tiny change to the, to the Bible, to part of the Bible, the wording of a, of, of a section of it, or kind of change the meaning of something. And then to, to see it have a huge positive impact on, uh, um, on the world we live in today. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, go back in time, have, you know, like whisper in someone's ear when they're writing this down and say, I don't know, no, I'll use this word instead of that word. And then flash forward back to today, and 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 what what tiny little change can you guys think of that would just turn into just a really really beneficial positive thing? Um, that really again, it was somebody who didn't really know science and didn't really know what was going on, and just wrote some words down on some paper. But if you could just tweak it just a little bit, um, save lives, uh, make the world better, and you know, sure. I've obviously got some some thoughts. But I'd love to love to hear what you guys think. Larry, you wrote a book on it. Why don't you start? Well, first? no, um, I was thinking about that, and I wrote a I wrote a chapter in the book about what the Bible could have said, uh, and, and it was, you know, taking this book instead of that book type of thing, and uh, it, there could be a heck of a lot better book out there than the Bible. Is the point that I was trying to make there? I didn't make one about a tiny change, and I'm not really sure that a tiny change uh, would make a difference. Because right now the book, the Bible is um, Rorschach test. I mean, yeah. it says more about what you find in the Bible than what it says. Right. Because you know, it says everything. You can support any particular idea by reading something in the Bible. It's just all over the board. Hmm. And I think that if you made a little tiny change back then, mankind themselves would either ignore it or, right. or reinterpret it or, right. or whatever to make it fit their worldview as it currently exists so i do have one of those small changes it actually came from john richards we had a conversation with him a while back but i had put a disclaimer at the very beginning of the book that says all characters appearing in this work are fictitious 
any resemblance to real persons living or dead or immortal are purely coincidental yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah right. a preface saying this is all allegory <laughs> yeah, yeah none yeah. of this actually happened yeah Take just the one, lessons just one black page that supernaturally can't be removed from the book you remember yeah. no matter how many times you try to rip it out it just keeps popping up or yeah. start at the very beginning of each chapter but my problem though is yeah. like larry said that'd be something that would be easily ignored or taken out but i do think a disclaimer like that might have helped set back the momentum a bit you know yeah. like if something yeah, like that I mean, was actually in it people they've would be like, taken whole books of the bible and throwing them out the window they sure have i they mean sure. you make a small change like that if they didn't like it they just toss it uh mankind is mankind you know we, mankind we, have, our, is mankind. we have a reptile brain that pretty much pushes us uh away from kindness and, mankind's uh, gonna man we mankind. constantly have to fight that hmm. so I, I i totally i totally agree with you guys in in, in that and but maybe i'm thinking subtler like <laughs> my one thought was um if if there was just a passage that talked about soap or mm -hmm. talked about germ theory or something like that, that that you know, it took us you know hundreds of years to to realize that hey, we should probably wash our hands after we stick our our fingers in someone's you know gut and mm -hmm. then go deliver a baby, uh, right? Right. Mm -hmm. deal thing. So like seriously, like no, that that's in my book. <laughs> yes, yes, that's, that's know, what I thought. If he had just if he had just told us about germs, it would have saved. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of not millions yeah, yeah. so th those are the little things i'm talking about and i and i there's one brilliant one that that kristen and i came up with on the drive home uh the other day and this one the the, the positive impact of this is very topical but if they would have if we would have explained in the bible that the soul doesn't enter the body until the baby breathes their first breath right then the whole oh, abortion argument would be completely That's, changed. That is in the Bible. Well, to make a, to make a point, it yeah, is. It is. I mean, so, people ignore it. They they so go with other just other passages it. and other interpretations because it doesn't fit what they I, want to I, do. I've got a similar devil's advocate here, where it's let's say we put in the passage about soap in the Bible. Okay, and it's accurate, and it like demonstrates that the Bible or that those who wrote the Bible had awareness of germs and and germ theory and proper sanitation. And how could they possibly know that back then, when that field of science didn't exist for like another four hundred years or something like that? I feel like that could only further increase the confidence of those who want to push unhealthy dogma on people mm -hmm. just because of soap, just because of soap. And and if it wasn't if it wasn't so much a scientific point, one that we can demonstrate with science, then I would be more happy with that because I don't want science to be, uh, I don't want religion to be used to prove science. It, it, it really, like that's not the, the, that's not the value of religion for a lot of people. And it's only going to be used to bolster more belief in non-scientific beliefs. But if yeah. instead, if it was just, how do you treat people? And like, mm -hmm. can you give us, um, yeah, we may not be able, to, there is no sense of um, obligatory justice. God is not in concern with karmic values. It's your responsibility to make up for the consequences of your actions. And yeah. you can make the, right. the reality that you live in good or bad, but sometimes bad people get away with bad things. Sometimes good people don't get rewarded. But overall, if you trend for this set of actions, you can improve the quality of life that you have here. You can improve your well being. So this is how. These aren't the guideline rules, stipulations, lists of like a hundred set of rules of what to do and what not to do. These are like the foundational guidelines where we can empower you to come up with a system of governance that's in the best interest of the people who are, are you know, uh, contained or, or mediated by that uh, rule set or ethics. Teach us ethics in the Bible would be really yeah. good. A whole chapter of just ethics and morals and how they work. And I think if you use that and like structured it so well that all the rest of the stuff that's in the Bible is like, oh, this is just flowery nonsense. Let's look to right. these two big things. We have great, and here's the thing. We have great kings, supposedly, or alleged great kings that were called great kings in the Bible, but we never hear anything from them other than the stories that they had with God and, and hanging out or being thrown in the lion pits or like creepily watching women take showers from like their, their castles and stuff like that. Why don't you just tell us some of the rules and dictates that they did? And even if it wasn't their exact rules, come up with a codified rules of a uh, baseline of ethics and morals and say, this is what King David said 
on how to rule people. Or this is what Lazarus commanded for his people. And it's structured mm -hmm. so well that people can use that as a template for building governments and, and making sure people are, are well and right. power doesn't get out of control. And yeah. I think that could be really, really useful. Maybe something yeah. that would automatically be taken out. And why, why would a you know, perfect omniscient being create a Bible that could be misinterpreted in the first place. Right. And if he's, if he's all powerful and totally in control of everything, every minute of, of the world, hmm. he could make a, a book that's self-updating so that we could understand it. He could make it update to the person who's reading it so yeah. that they have no misunderstanding about what it's But we asked for a little change, not a crazy supernatural <clears throat> thing, but I would love something <laughs> like that. Again, if we had a supernatural book, I'd be a supernatural believer, like 10,000%, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if you can make like a small change, I would say make a chapter that's just ethics. Keep it as long as, take out numbers if you want. <laughs> take out numbers if you want to and give like me the Leviticus book. and Deuteronomy. Yeah. So useless. Most of, the, yeah. most of the chapters in the Bible are completely useless. And most Christians yeah. don't even read them in the first place. So why yeah. don't you just give us like a book of here's how ethics works, here are morals work. And instead of us going from the dark ages to our period of enlightenment uh, over like 300 years, give us a solid head start because we're still referencing people from days of enlightenment way back when because they still made good points just put those good points in the bible give us like a 2000 year head start anyway getting down to the bottom of the half hour larry why don't you take us out we'll, okay we'll sure back. uh stay tuned for the second half of the digital free thought radio hour and wozo radio 103.9 lpfm here in knoxville tennessee we'll be right back after this short break okay Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Daughter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take a moment just to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year, going on 21 now. Uh, we have over 1,000 members, and we have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for a sense hide at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom Ask meeting. And if you'd like to join us on Zoom from anywhere, really, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or at knoxvilleatheist.org, our website. Or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one! That's right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Hey, we were talking today about the New Year wishes that we all had. We made some fitness goals for everybody. We have three different kinds of fitness goals. One, Eric, you're running it right now today. Uh, Larry, you're getting ready to start a fitness journey and I'm just doing the cosmetic values. I want abs. What else can I say? What else can I say? Uh, then we also went into some Tennessee license plate shenanigans that are going on. And while it was a little uh, concerning, what we found out is like the default is the atheist, the, the secular uh, license plate because we have a separation of church and state mandate right and the state is offering a vanity license for free that some people are partaking but what we're realizing is that the overwhelming majority of people in tennessee aren't picking it but it's in fact just the rural areas that are picking it at large majorities and i think over time as these public shifts of uh, public opinion shifts and our awareness and our capability to uh, to maintain our own well-being rather than relying on a god to take care of it for us shift in better directions we will become less religious over time i give it 20 years but we'll see we'll come back to the show in 20 years and see where we're at but i think we're we're making really great great trends already larry what do you can, think can we make it sooner than 20 years <laughs> <laughs> larry wants to see it too <laughs> yeah, larry fine. you did a good job getting us up to here don't okay. worry, okay. Don't worry. <laughs> but uh we then transition to things that you would change in the bible and a uh, small change that you can make to the Bible, just the Christian Bible, that would lead to the most beneficial impact for all society. Uh, Larry, you made a good point. If it's, you know, something that people will ignore in favor of some other predetermined conclusion they had about the religious book, they'll follow it. And as a result, 
Boudreaux, you mentioned maybe we can make some scientific laws more apparent. But I do feel like that could be uh, setting us up for greater failures, for getting us out of that good trend that we're in, because then people would use religion to support their claim that they're right, because it's scientifically demonstrated. And we don't have an excuse for why that could be in the Bible, other than the fact that it must also be accurate as well. Muslims do this, by the way, all the time. They'll take very poetic phrases and they'll say, that's proof that uh, uh, Allah is real because this passage is about embryos. And and you read it, it's just like the flower petal opened up and humanity came from. It's like, well, that means humanity came from buds. It's like, no, what are we talking about here? Um, so yeah, I worry about that. So I said, why not we make a code of ethics and we codify them into the Bible? We already have very good standards for how to treat people in, in society now. Whether we follow them or not is a different issue, but we can codify them, make them apparent in the Bible, make it very clear, make, give it its own chapter. And perhaps that could be a good way to head start and improve in a society because we can always work to improve that. So if anything, it would just save us 400 years of figuring that out ourselves since the time of enlightenment. Boudreau, what do you think? What are your changes to the Bible that you'd make for improving society? Yeah, I'd like to build on your your thought on ethics. And and one of the things that's always bothered me about, you know, most Christian religions is the whole bit about forgiveness. You know, mm-hmm. it 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 really changes the um morality uh to, you know, you could actually be a pretty horrible person all your life, but you know, if you if you ask for forgiveness and and bring God in your heart and all that and you're on your deathbed, then you yeah. go to heaven. Yeah. It kind of it kind of sets us up for pretty bad incentive program, yeah. I think. Um so kind of scrapping that whole concept and, and making it again more about um being good to um for goodness others. for goodness sake not because yeah. it's dictated right 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 exactly and and again you can still you can still have a god in the picture of that but just yeah like 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 ty said make it more about you know being good to other people and and yeah again just scrapping that whole loophole <laughs> forgiveness loophole i think mm. you know would, would I, have been I throw this one out too, because I think I could run into the same problem by putting ethics in the Bible, where now court systems are now, I mean, they're already, you have to swear on a Bible or or some other book in front of a jury, jury of peers who are also Christian. It's like, you're going to probably pick the Bible. But like, right. honestly, it's, um, if we made morals so codified so well, it only make the Bible the authority and morality, which it totally right. is not, because there's some horrendous things in there. So what right. if, Instead, it was you have the ethics and the and the morals, but you also throw in there like, hey, if someone believes something that it's not what you believe, that's on a supernatural level, that's not a big deal. Like it doesn't matter what God people are believing; it's whether or not they're following these standards of behavior in terms of like understanding the consequences of their actions, not being harmful to society, reducing needless harm. If they do that, they're good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and then otherwise please follow these standards otherwise, but that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good society. point to make uh, to, to people generally, because if you go to look at our law books, mm. none of the laws on the books, whether they're state, civil, uh, federal, um, say, you know, this is a law because it says this in the Bible, right? None of them are based on the Bible, right? They're based on harm to each other. Right, right. Make it clear, like these rules aren't true because they're in the Bible. They're true because of how we come to terms with how we treat other people. Right. And found that these are good ways of reducing needless harm. These are right. good ways of improving uh, society as well being. Yes, mm-hmm. in society, and this is why they're good. If you find better methods that are inside this book, those are the better methods, and you should follow them. But they should still follow the same principles of reducing needless harm and improving general welfare of people. Period. We're not an authority on anything. And if someone believes something slightly different, even though we've come with different rules, that's not a big deal. You can work on it together. That's the whole reason why we're here is to work on better systems. What do you think, Boudreaux? Here, here's the rub. Uh, and I know we're 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 just I love it. things here. But but if we if we go back and we make some of these tweaks to to the Christian Bible mm. that we're talking about, we're 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 probably affecting its likelihood of surviving (laughs) i bet bet there were some some religious texts or some even some some religious uh uh, concepts Mm. that figured out that 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 died off because it if you allow other religions to exist then you know you're 
you're not promoting your own religion, it's less likely for it to survive. So some of the bad bits in the Bible, yeah, uh, I think were were um, beneficial to its survival and its popularity. Um, you know, so we go tweaking these, and then now our time machine we go back, and, and then we we come back to the present day, and then religion's gone. Right, <laughs> we, right, we right, it right. It's, just... it's only a matter of fact that the Bible becomes more peaceful as we realize that murdering a bunch of brown people on some other continent is actually a bad thing to do, or it yeah. looks bad on a PR frame. But you know, in my head. I feel like the history of why people are Christians today, at least in America, is a very, very uh, telling story of how corrupt Christianity is. It's like a mafia movie, but like rated X because it's mm -hmm. just kings and queens constantly killing each other. Oh, what's up, Larry? Go on ahead. Go on ahead. Well, with or without religion, you still have kings and queens killing each other. I mean, <laughs> that's very true. That, that's a power play, you know. That's <laughs> it's, it's just power plays. It's just power yeah, plays. Yeah, it's just yeah, power yeah. plays, slavery, enslavement, uh, war mongering, and and trying to amass authority and power for yeah. as few people as possible. That's right. but what I was, what I was going to say was uh, you mentioned that like we would, we've missed like four hundred years of, of progress because of religion. Uh, well, that's true, mm. but it's still going on. Don't forget that we're still fighting religion for progress today. Hmm. Uh, social progress, scientific progress, always standing in opposition. Uh, the st stem cell search, uh, universe uh, exploration, and looking into the Big Bang, just the opposition, opposition to all of this stuff. It just don't forget it's still going on and we need to fight it as much right. as we can. And, and you know, the weird thing is, God mentions that there's other gods in the Bible. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. It's what it, it could be one of those things that could be easily cherry picked on or off for people. So mentioning other gods and being kind to other people, the Bible says be kind to other people. The Bible says there are other gods. Like God says that himself. It's like, don't worship those other gods. And I'm like, right. what other gods? And it's like God's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, Rule seven, by the way, don't steal or think about stealing. It's also a sin. Um, if we if we put it in, I think, as like the book of philosophy, and it's mm -hmm. like the tellings of a, a famous king from the Bible, Saul, I think Saul was a king, David, um, Lazarus, like these are his, their quotes on how to rule and make a good government. And, and it's three different books from three different kings over a period of time where we can see that, yes, I'm referencing some of these older rules, but I've made improvements over them because it's not real. There weren't true because they were in the Old Testament. They're true because they follow these certain principles that were demonstrably valuable, but we can make improvements on them because it's a system that we're working on, not a code of uh, rules, right? Code of law, yeah. It's a code of law, right. And so like when you get to like the third king, you're like, oh, like this is a good stepping stone bridge off for us to form our own society based off of. And 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 we can work on it together. And if as long as we follow certain principles that are that that can be empirically reached, we can really look at how to make a better society for everybody. And if someone has a slightly different society, that's not a problem that we should go to war against them just because they believe in a different God or they have a different idea about something. It's, we can still ratify a code of ethics for everybody to follow, to have like the best welfare and learn from each other. Like maybe that diversity is valuable for us to at least see how different systems work and what we can learn from each other. Maybe that can push us more towards a peaceful, more understanding, more critical thinking route. Whether it gets rid of Christianity, it may not. But at least we'll deal with a Christianity that's a lot more in favor of the people that are indoctrinated by it than one where it's just God will take care of it. And then yeah. they they continue to like, you know, do terrible things yeah. to the earth. What do you think, yeah. Larry? Well, you know, if, I don't think it's a small thing. I, I didn't mention it earlier because I, you know, we were asking for one small change in the Bible. Sure. Hmm. But I think that if the afterlife, the soul and the afterlife, uh, if we could get rid of any. <clears throat> Um, dependence on another life after this one i think that would be the the best thing you know live this life to the best of your ability mm. and make it <clears throat> easier and better for uh, following generations i think yeah. if that was a central message of the bible if we could change that i think it would make all the and, difference in the world and i think I, you're on to something because why would anyone care about philosophy on how to make this life better if we're going to a paradise right. after <clears> this life like that would be the immediate reason why most people wouldn't think about a book of philosophy. It's like, why do mm -hmm. we need philosophy if the next life we have is is so much better? Mm -hmm. But if you take that, 
if you take the afterlife out of any holy book, you immediately have basically zero followers because the advertisement from competitors are like, oh, they don't even have an afterlife. We have an afterlife. Right. It's like, oh, death is universally yeah. scary for a lot of people who don't yeah. have a who have not come to terms with life being a finite experience, right? Larry, well, you want that? yeah, but there are whole religions that don't have uh, you know the afterlife as a goal. I mean, you've got the Eastern religions like Confucianism and Taoism and, and all that that focus on making this a better life. You know, true, they do believe in an afterlife. They they believe that their ancestors are still with them and mm. can commune with them and all that. But it's, it's not a goal. The goal is to make this a better life. Mm. I think those are better religions for having made that change. But if you were to ask me, I would think like the biggest mm. hurdle of losing your religion is reconciling with the idea of not having an afterlife and that like yeah, death right. is a oh, I agree. Final. I agree. Yeah? like mm -hmm. it's not even so much oh god's not watching me if i accidentally touch myself at night or if right. i think about a girlfriend's like no it's the death thing it's the death thing because yeah. that is guaranteed to happen to you everything else is you know potentialities but death is going to happen anyone who's watching the show will die and and that is a scary concept that if you've not come to terms with it, the the best thing that you could do is ignore it and and give yourself this placebo that it will never actually happen to you, that death is just a change of address and not an actual event, right? Um, and so if you took that out, I think it'd be really hard. Is I think you it'd be really hard. Buja, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think it goes to my earlier point that that would that would drastically affect its survival uh, survival, you know. Mm. Um, how well it, it again it's a huge marketing um piece to it um yeah yeah i think i think that the other the other big one i think is the the, the constant watching right and that's that 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 enabled us to go from small groups of of people that we could kind of watch everybody we could get into larger groups and not have these freeloaders um as part of it because we could just go hey the big guy's watching you know hey yeah. santa's watching oh yeah and that's, that's how you get your kids to um, hey, I, and the the obvious one we're, we're we completely overlooked though is just the very end of it. Please burn after reading. Right? Problem solved. <laughs> just just, just now, convince somebody. I wish burn. that I wish that worked, and I wish people wouldn't use that as impetus to not learn how to read. You know, it's well, like, are you burning a book? Did you learn how to read? We're yeah. gonna get you. <laughs> um, um, there, there was another a tweak to this that we, I, I, I know we were talking about the Christian Bible, but if we moved over to the Quran, um, I could see some tweaks being beneficial to us atheists. And, you know, instead of beheading, you know, apostates and, and, and uh, having incentives to kill yourself for the greater good and to get the 42 virgins, raisins, whatever it is. Uh -huh. And if, if you, if you could put some words in, in there to say, you know, what do you do to someone who doesn't believe in, in your God or someone who's atheist? Um, maybe pray for them instead of trying to take oh, them out, you know, yeah. but just it, again, and report it, them it, to it, God in the most angry voice possible. Exactly. And then just move on with the rest of your life. Exactly. He's like, he doesn't believe. Oh, I'm going to get him. And then you're yeah. just like, no, <laughs> scrabble, scrabble. Yeah. Come back. I already yeah. prayed. God knows, and he's gonna he'll do it. He'll take care of it from them. I do like the idea. I think we talked about this a couple of episodes back, is that you should only ever be as angry or outraged about any topic as your God is demonstrably outraged. So if someone puts up a God doesn't exist flag in their front yard and that's like direct blasphemy against your God, watch carefully and see if his house ever gets hit by lightning or if a right. flood like carries it away, or if a bunch yeah. of locusts come and eat his front yard and bush rose bushes. And if none of that happens, don't be any more angry than your God. You don't have to be angry for my sake, or as God would say, it's like, don't. Yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. Really good point. Well, like if, if the gay people are getting married and God's not doing anything and he could have done something, like then leave it alone. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, and don't, if he does something, you you don't need to do anything. And if he does something, then, you don't need to do it. And then if he does something and later on doesn't do anything, don't need it. But you're not the arm right. of God. You're not right. the act of God. Mm -hmm. Like nature will handle why it. Why does why would God need an arm? Exactly. Can't he handle it himself? Why does he need why does he need Ted Smithman and his right. very angry group of friends? It's like, no, it's right. all good. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it would also be I know 
I know a picture is worth a thousand words, but maybe we're overlooking something here. Maybe if instead of changing the text, we had like a way to add a picture to the Bible. I know this is, you know, getting a little bit beyond small changes, but recently we just had a beautiful telescopic image of the universe yeah. taken again at higher resolution for us. We had some uh, older ones that were like, kind of like cool, but this is like high definition, 8K picture of our galaxy. And what you can see when you look at it is like the most startling, mind-blowing thing possible. But just these big clusters of light, big clusters of light. And when you look at them, tiny little dots inside of them. And you're like, wow, is that like another solar? It's like, no, that's a whole galaxy. That is like another Milky Way galaxy. And there's right. hundreds of them in this picture, oh. maybe thousands. Yeah, and it's yeah. only looking in a pinhole direction in one mm. random spot in the, in, in, in the sky. Think about right. that, or like in our space. So yeah. this is like exponentially huge, and that's only as far as it could see. Past that, there's probably even more and more. And you think, yeah. wow, 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 wow. So <clears throat> of this huge giant expanse, God cares whether Timmy marries Stephen. Like, is is <laughs> is is this an actual thing, or are we so insignificant that we should really think about? man, we're so small, yet we're having this conversation. That makes us actually really special. Like we have so much agency here right now. Let's make use of that for the good rather than spend yeah. all of our time rehashing these, you know, arcane <clears throat> fables. Yeah, or put it another way, if America is so important to Christianity, why didn't God mention it in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Mormons are knocking on the door. They'd love to answer that. But why not just a picture of that, but you don't explain what it is, right? Just it's a big old picture and you let science basically figure out like, hey, this this would that would that hurt or take away some of my points? Or do you just explain, hey, by the way, the universe is super huge. You're really, really small. I God doesn't really care about your finer rules. Yeah. You have your list of rules from your, your kings. Use those. There is not a God watching you. You got to make sure you're you're doing this yourself. Here's a picture of the universe just to explain how big this is. And this is only like a fraction of it. It's not even the big thing, but it's a nice little picture. You can look at Earth. You can't find it. It's not even big enough to be a pixel on this. You'll figure out what pixels are later on. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> end of the chapter. It's like, what? This is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. uh, would you add a picture to the book, Blue Drill? What would you show as a picture? Uh, you know, I, I'm... I'm torn by your your statement too. Or I want to be careful not to put too much scientific, right. relevant, scientifically right. relevant things because then yeah, it just later on becomes a. Uh, then then how about this? What if it was just a picture, kind of like what kids make in third grade, and it's like a picture of like people holding hands, and you have like the white person holding hands, a black person holding hands, yeah. a Muslim girl, uh, yeah. a, a, a Chinese person, a lady wearing pants, two ladies wearing holding each other's hands, like all the way down, and you're just like, humanity's okay. All right, yeah. end of the chapter. It's like, you guys are okay. You guys are getting better too. And this is what it's all about. And maybe people can look at that and not have this homogenous chosen people mindset and just right. see- Oh, okay. Okay. Different people working together, getting along. That's what we're about. That's, that's what makes us, that's what makes evolution work. That's what makes yeah. it work. You know? Yeah. That. And then one of those uh, pictures where if you stare at it long enough, you see a hidden picture pop up. And it's, you know, a sailboat or something. <laughs> it's a teddy <tender>. bear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> MC Larry. Escher stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Larry, do you have a picture that you'd recommend? A picture? Yeah, a picture that you would add to the Bible. Oh, um, the atomic uh, symbol. <laughs> um, you know, say this this item makes up everything. That they're called atoms or whatever. Uh, maybe a, 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 a swirling picture of a galaxy. Ooh. Uh, and say, and point with an arrow pointing to and say, suns, you know, stars. What if? So sun is a star. Yeah, what if it was the nutritional pyramid? And it's not the, uh -huh. the the terrible one that the government was like forced into giving due to the the corn and bread and 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 Sugar carbohydrate industry. lobby. Yeah. But it was actually the inverse where it's like, hey, don't eat this much candy. Bread is full of simple base sugar. sugar. It's yeah. not really used mm -hmm. for you. Protein's really good. This if you do this, your mentality, your thinking power, your your energy for the day is gonna be so great. Obesity will be much lower. Your hearts will be much healthier. This is a good way to take care of yourself. See you later. Bye. Yeah. The whole bottom of the pyramid would be. Whole fish. bottom. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you'd have That's to have why like I made so many of these oceans. <laughs> you'd have to have some some uh, disclaimer on it, like don't don't read this part until you know the nineteen. 1950- oh, oh, that's interesting. Right? Interesting. So Wait a minute, have- but yeah, but you couldn't say nineteen hundred because then they'd say nineteen hundred after what? Because right, your right, husband right. didn't know anything. But well, it's oh. theoretically said that Christ was coming, but he didn't say when. So oh, yeah, like right. sealed envelopes that only open up after a certain period of time or something yeah. like that, man, mm-hmm. that'd be rough. Uh, why not, why not um, uh, one that's like only a starts at the 1960s and it's just a picture of a light signal flipper on a car and be like, use this in bold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. No, but I mean, you wouldn't have to have sealed envelopes. You could just have blank pages where the, uh, the text didn't show until a certain year. Or go. a certain time we love until our, we, man was ready for it or something. Yeah, we love our supernatural Bibles. We need one. We need yeah, one. we definitely these these auto printed ones aren't so good. But it could be like a tablet, uh, just like e-reader. Mm. Mm-hmm. I've always said God should have a social media account and just like tweet these out. Well, he does. He does. Look him up. He needs an official one. He needs an official one. Not <laughs> it's pretty blue, official. The blue it's tick works, the blue ticks got taken off of his account on Twitter. It's really unfortunate. Anyway, <laughs> guys, I think we're at the bottom of the show right getting there all right Boudreaux, anything you'd recommend and thank you so much for coming on the show for today yeah, yeah. yeah happy new year yeah, yeah happy new year I, I apologize it's been a while since i've been on again uh my my one of um best times for me to go to the orange theory is is during the radio show chris and i go together sure. um most sundays and this um but but yeah this this was a good chance to get back on hope to, to join more um yeah. cool very nice. good nice I'm looking forward to shaving. I didn't want to shave over the holiday. I don't like shaving. I always cut myself slightly. Black people have very coarse hair and there's not a clean way of doing it because most products are for Asian or white people. And the ones that are for, for black people are really offensive because they have like pictures of German shepherds and chains on them and stuff like oh, that. No. Like, I'm not buying that. <laughs> I'm a human being. And they, they cost more money too. But eventually I'll either have to like cut, uh, deal with the fact that I have to buy something that will break down because my hair is so coarse or just not shave when I don't have to go to work because we sometimes mm-hmm. wear gas masks and stuff like that. So Yeah, well, a two-day beard is so popular these days, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. So I'm hopefully we'll take this off by next week and and we'll see how that's going to go. Larry, mm-hmm. anything you'd recommend? Uh, you wouldn't believe it, but one of the things I got I bought myself for Christmas was an electric razor. Yeah? I mean, I have a beard, you can tell. I can, I can definitely see <laughs> but it. I, I shave here. Okay. I shave under here. So uh, electric razor saved me from having to leather up and wipe my face and all that stuff. Right. So I'm happy to have it. And uh, it's doing a good job. Nice. Oh, um, am I closing out the show? Has well, everybody I mean, said their thing? No, no. I just mean like for me, I still don't know what atheism is or what it's about. And uh... oh, <laughs> I happen to have a source for that. Oh, really? Okay. Really? Yeah. My book can be found at uh, Amazon. It's called Atheism. What's it all about? Uh, a series of articles about atheism and and the proofs uh, that we depend on. Uh, to show that God isn't real, anybody's God, really, not just Christianity. Um, so check it out. Um, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com, where most of the articles for the book came from. Uh, be sure to click on the blog button for a radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on Wozo Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.